I'm going to show you seven ways to make patterns on cakes. Let's start by making stripes. Cover your cake with frosting and scrape around a few times with a cake comb to get it fairly smooth, but don't worry about getting it perfect. Then switch to a striped cake comb, which is one of these that looks like castle turrets on the side, and scrape around the cake just as you would with a straight cake comb. You'll imprint the grooves of the stripes, and at first they'll look really messy, but as you scrape again and again, they'll get more and more smooth. If there are any indents or shallow areas, just spread a bit more frosting over those parts and then scrape again. Make sure you've spread enough frosting around the top edge of the cake so that that top stripe sticks up above the top edge of the cake and put the whole cake in the freezer for 15 minutes and set a timer because you don't want to leave it for any longer. Choose your next color and put it into a piping bag, either without a piping tip, just the end cut off, or you can use a piping tip about the same size as the grooves in your stripes. Pipe the frosting into the grooves to fill them in, and this does not have to be neat, but you do want to fill in the grooves completely so that there aren't any air pockets. Now scrape around the cake with a straight-edged cake comb, and you'll smear the second color of frosting all over the cake, but as you scrape again and again, you'll take off all of the excess to reveal the really neat stripes underneath. The reason for putting the cake in the freezer is so that the first color of stripes holds its shape, and those stripes won't get warped as you continue to scrape. Tidy up the top edge, here's an appearance from my middle child, and you have perfectly neat striped frosting. If you want your stripes to go up and down the cake vertically, here's a technique for that. Wrap a piece of acetate or parchment paper or baking paper around your cake, pulling it about an inch out from the cake so you have a bit extra, and then tape this down onto a baking sheet or a tray, anything flat that you can move around. Spread frosting all over it, and then use your striped cake comb to pull from the top edge down to the bottom edge. You might have to do this a few times to take off all of the buttercream, but you do want to leave a very thin layer behind, so that the stripes don't break apart from each other later. Put this tray into the freezer for 15 minutes while you prepare your next color of buttercream, and then when you take the tray out, spread the second color into the gaps. Scrape off all of the excess so that the whole surface is smooth, and then untape the acetate or paper, Lift it up and press it onto the sides of a cake, which needs to have a crumb coat on already. Press it against the cake to attach it. Put the whole cake back into the fridge or freezer for 15 to 30 minutes to set this frosting. And then peel the acetate or paper off, leaving vertical stripes behind. You will need to touch these up a bit, because there will be air pockets where the buttercream didn't go all the way down to the acetate or paper. So just fill those in by spreading on that same color, scrape off the excess, a hot metal cake comb works really well for this, and you can heat it either by dipping it into hot water or holding it underneath running hot water. And ta-da! Use cookie cutters as a guide to create patterns like for this vintage style cake. After you've frosted a cake, press cookie cutters in gently to imprint their shape, and then use a variety of piping tips and colors to add details to the cake following those lines as guides. Petal tips work really nicely for this to make ruffles, and using a variety of colors with the same piping tip and same technique adds a lot of extra detail without a lot of extra effort on your part. You can pipe lines and dots using round piping tips, although piping perfectly smooth, neat lines is a lot trickier than piping texture. Using cookie cutters like this allows you to create whatever pattern you like and makes sure that everything is equally spaced around the cake by marking it before you start piping. You can create endless patterns by using stencils on your cakes. The two tricks to really neat stenciling are firstly to chill your cake so that the frosting is really firm before you put your stencil onto the cake, and secondly to make sure the stencil doesn't move, which I like to do by using pins to attach the stencil on all four corners into the cake, because if it moves as you're spreading the buttercream on, you'll smudge the design or the pattern. Good news, if you're using a stencil to cover the cake completely with a pattern, then by the time you've finished, there'll be so many details on the cake you really won't notice tiny imperfections in the stenciling. Also, if you're going to add any other details like piping or sprinkles or gold leaf or whatever, you can be really strategic with where you place it on the cake so that you cover up any imperfections. For any pattern in a grid, you can use parchment paper or baking paper to space that grid evenly. Wrap the paper around the cake to measure it so that it's the same circumference as the cake, and then fold it in half and half again and half again and half again in both directions until you've made a perfect grid. Wrap the paper around the cake again and then use a toothpick or a pin to poke through every point where the creases meet, or every other one. 
Then when you peel the paper off, you'll be left with the grid on the cake, which you can then pipe over, creating a perfectly spaced, neat pattern. Another way to use this technique with the parchment paper is to do diagonal lines of patterns. After folding the paper to make your grid, and wrapping it around the cake, and poking your pin or toothpick through it, instead of just using one piping tip and color to create little dots, you can vary the piping tips and the colors to make diagonal lines for a different pattern. I love all of the color and textures in this one. Back to cookie cutters for the next one, and for this one I'm going to be using one bag piping where you use different shades of the same color or different colors within the same piping bag, instead of having to use different piping bags for different colors. Use your cookie cutter to imprint your pattern, which is going to be concentric circles for this one, and then fill the sections with piping to create these shapes on your cake. Now, as a side note, for almost any pattern, if you want to make it flat, you can do that with the facelift frosting technique, which I've done here and also on this cake. And the tutorial for that is at the top of the screen and in the video description, or Google facelift frosting. To create patterned texture, use a textured cake comb. First, frost the cake as normal and make sure that the sides are straight and the top is level, but don't worry about any imperfections in your frosting at this point. It doesn't need to be perfectly smooth. Switch to a textured cake comb and scrape around the cake again and again to imprint that texture, and then spread extra frosting onto any indents or imperfections in the texture, and then scrape again. The final result is gorgeous and really doesn't need any decorations other than this textured patterned frosting. I hope you've seen some ideas you'd like to try. Join me over on my online cake school on BritishGirlBakes.com. Thanks for watching.